Okay, welcome back. Uh, as I promised before, we're looking at the multiplicative inverse, and that again sounds like difficult words. Um, but uh, the idea of multiplicative inverse is simply if I have any number x, what can I multiply with to get the multiplicative identity? Now, the multiplicative identity, another big word, is simply 1. Okay, it's because if I multiply anything with 1, I just get my same answer. So if I say I've got 2 times 1, I get 2. So 1 is the multiplicative identifier identity um, because when I multiply with them I just get the original thing I was multiplying with. Now what can I multiply x with so that my answer is the multiplicative identity? In other words, simply put, what can I multiply with to get 1? That's what the multiplicative inverse is. And it's actually extremely easy. The multiplicative inverse is simply 1 over the number that I'm talking about. So if I have a number x, then 1 over x is the multiplicative inverse. Why? Because x is actually x over 1 times 1 over x. I see, okay, I can cancel common factors because there's no pluses and minuses in the numerator. So that can cancel with that, which means that it divides into itself once and into their ones. So 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times 1 is 1. So my answer is simply 1. In other words, this is the multiplicative inverse. Okay, so let's make it even simpler than that by using some numbers. In other words, 4 times 1. 1 over 4 is equal to 1, which means the multiplicative inverse for 4 is 1 over 4. Let's call it m i. Okay, it's 1 over 4. Ah, oh, any number, right? I don't even want to make it difficult, uh, but 10 would be 1 over 10. It is as simple as that. But what about a fraction? Okay, before I get, get to that, actually, uh, the from what we learned in the previous video, we learned that if I have something like this, a coefficient, a base and an exponent, and if my exponent is negative, it means C is actually divided by B E times. So let's do that like that. Okay, when the exponent has a negative, then I can, it is actually C is divided by B E times, assuming now that E is positive, but it has a negative in front of it. Okay. So another way of looking at it is that if I have, I can go from this way into that direction. So if I look at this thing, 1 over x, okay, 1 over x means 1 is divided by x once. So another way of writing that is x to the power of negative 1 which means that negative exponents can also be used to indicate so negative negative exponents is multiplying multiply multiplying with inverse with inverse okay let me show you what i mean by that okay multiplying with the multiplicative inverse obviously okay so for example if I have let's go for 24 times 2 to the power of negative 2 okay that means I'm multiplying with the inverse of 2 because there's a negative okay that's what this means I'm multiplying with the inverse of 2 twice which means it's 24 times the inverse of 2 is then 1 over 2 and I'm multiplying with it twice because of that 2 so I'm multiplying with that twice now 24 can be 24 over 1 so 2 can divide into 24 12 times and 2 that 2 can divide again into the 24 uh, into the 12 6 times so that my answer in the end is 6 times 1 times 1 is 6 and 1 times and these all become 1 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So my final answer is simply 6. That's another way of looking at negative exponents as multiplying with the inverse. 
Now, what is the multiplicative inverse of a fraction? So if I had a fraction, like a numerator over a denominator, what can I multiply with so that my answer is 1? Okay, it's not that difficult. I can multiply with D over N. In other words, I swap the numerator and denominator uh, with each other and multiply. And why does that work? Well, then they simply cancel. Okay, they will cancel with one another or actually divide into one another so that my answer ends up 1 times 1, 1 times 1 to give me actually 1 over 1. Uh, that's not working. Let's do it like that. 1 over 1, it's cheating a bit, is equal to 1. Okay, so the inverse, and remember what we said now, if the inverse of a fraction, and how do we indicate the inverse? With a negative exponent, so negative 1, is simply, and what do we call it when we swap the numerator and the denominator around? It's called the reciprocal, is simply the reciprocal. Okay, so the inverse is simply the reciprocal. Now, even an easier way of looking at this is by saying if, uh, or let's say it like that, a negative, that's negative with an A, negative exponent over a fraction, over a fraction. And I'm just going to call it tip, tips, the fraction. Know what I mean? It tips it from numerator and denominator to denominator and numerator. So let's look at another example. Let's say we um, divide 36 uh, times 3 over 2 square uh, to the power of negative 2. Negative 2. Okay, so a negative exponent tips the fraction. So I can tip it. So 36 times 2 over 3. Okay, that only changed the negative. It's still squared. So what does this mean? This is now again a, a coefficient, a base and exponent. So this means 36 is multiplied by 2 over 3 two times. 36 is multiplied by 2 over 3 two times. So again, okay, now 36 is actually 36 over 1. 3 divides into itself once and into 36 12 times. 3 divides into itself once and into 12 4 times. So we have 4 times 2 times 2, which means that's 8 and 16 over 1, which is just 16. Okay, I think that's more or less all I want to say about uh, the multiplicative inverse. The important idea that, uh, that you need to walk away with is just what does a negative exponent mean in the end? Uh, two things. The negative exponent is the is multiplying with the inverse so the inverse of 2 is 1 over 2 and the inverse of a fraction is just the reciprocal swapping around okay and uh, in the end what that means is when I when I have a negative exponent over a fraction that fraction just tips to make the exponent positive so that I can understand a little bit more about what the expression means but let me stop there I hope you enjoyed this lesson and that you actually learned something I'll see you in the next one